First thing I'm going to say is please excuse the mess, but I am literally work in progress. Uh, working studio with construction and insulation. Uh, so what I just finished was I just finished that side right there. Uh, made some adjustments with these right here uh, so that they, they line up better. Uh, so that adjustment was simply moving this block down from that mark. <clears throat> Had a bit of a, a gap on this right here. Uh, I am using plastic uh, versus Tyvek inside, so I'm using plastic on the inside more uh, closer to keeping the dust particles down uh, so that when I put something flat up against this right here, uh, I put a flat surface, what that does is that seals it, uh, and then I'll be putting a, a sealer uh, along uh, my living space. Uh, this back here, I'm not really concerned about it. It was 104 degrees today, and I, I took a step back here in this uninsulated area, and it, it felt like a greenhouse or a sauna. Uh, I'm actually going to check a temperature to see if there's a temperature variation, but I actually opened up the door, and I do, I do feel it was actually cooler outside than it was inside here. Uh, but I've got a brief uh, video here showing everybody how I'm uh, how I'm doing this. Uh, what I have here, let me turn the lights on for you. Uh, what I have here is some rock wool. Uh, this was purchased about a year ago, year and a half ago. I bought all my raw materials to uh, create the step van situation here. I am going to be doing a very thin foam in the back back here, uh, so I do have something that will be attached to the walls back here. Nothing is going to be going here but rock wool. Um, I'll open that back up. I've got four bats. So there's one, two, three, there's four bats. And then I've got the extra scrappage uh, right there to go around the corner. But if, uh, if you remember uh, me conversing with everyone involving, um, <clears throat> please excuse the mess yet again, uh, yes, I got my feathers back here. The entire step van is a complete disaster area. Uh, I, I am actually going to dare showing everybody what what kind of disaster and that that's all you're getting. So you can go ahead and pause that uh, if you want to uh, and, and things of that nature. My, my rodents decided to uh, make dinner uh, out of their uh, cage surroundings, so I've had to uh, make some adjustments with that as well. Uh, luckily they are sleeping, uh, but I will have to use those spare bats back there. Uh, a bat is one of those right there. So if you see that seam right there from there, I think they're like 40 some odd inches by 14 inches. Uh, one wall, uh, my step van uh, will accept four, one, two, three, four. So there's four, four runs of four. So eight and eight, so there's like 16 bats on each wall. Um, I got a pretty decent price uh, at, at Lowe's uh, whenever I got all this. Uh, and I think I, I think I showed everybody the receipt, so I think it was like $500 uh, for all of the insulation. That's the blue board, the insulation, and the extras that I went out and got. Uh, so it's a very simple thing. You take the plastic trash bag, you get the big contractor bags, the big thick ones, and yes, there's dust floating around in here. I'm going to have to dust my van after I get done. But you take the big uh, contractor bags and you cut them long ways, and then you cut the seam at the bottom and you've got a big sheet of plastic. And uh, that's what I'm using as a uh, dust barrier uh, here. Uh, with all of this being open, I've actually, uh, how can I show, well, I'll show you this dirty son of a bitch. And this is, this is my air filtration right here. Uh, so not only is this uh, from the rock wool, but this is also from me as well as the pets on the inside. Now, I have not cleaned this in, in almost a, a year, year and a half, as you see what I'm removing here. But this also has my skin, my skin cells, but... This, this right here is what I'm talking about. So this, this type of fine dust. Of course, I was cutting wood and things like that in here. And I do live out in the country, so there's a lot of pollen and a lot of dirt. So if you can see my boots, uh, my work boots, just the dirt from outside uh, being on my boot will show you what it's like. And uh, as you can see, my welcome mat is, is pretty pretty gnarly. Uh, so. I will be firing this up here before too long, and I've, I've got that right there, so I'm thinking about a system. 
and I've got this all opened up right now uh, I am contemplating on taking this right here and either backing it up against that or putting it over here uh, there is a possibility that I will be taking that out and like I said please excuse the mess but I have been cutting and doing construction in here uh, I have a piece of material uh, that I'm going to be putting across here to cover that up I'm not sure if I'm going to use plywood or if I'm going to use another type of material uh, but one thing I do have to recognize here is I'm looking looking at this right here and I'll, I'll turn this back around but I'm, I'm looking at this right here and I'm, I'm looking at the 2x4 but then I'm looking down the 2x4 and you see how far that sticks out right there so then whenever I put my slider in I'm going to have to make sure that I put my slider as far out uh, on the edge of this as possible uh, that way I, I miss this little Oh shit, what, what would I say? That's uh, probably half inch gap from about there to the end of my fingernail. So that's about a half inch gap. So the uh, the door sliders, I'll show you what those are going to look like, but it's, uh, it's a pocketed type situation. Uh, so all this is going to be tucked and this is all going to be moved out of the way. Uh, but one, one real quick tip, if, uh, if you've ever wondered how to cut rock wool, and I, I would say the, the simplest and the easiest approach and the, and the best method that I've found that actually works for cutting rock wool is go out and get yourself a machete. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, it can be old. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at that point. And if you look at that point, if we can zoom in on that, if I can get a background. Be able to zoom in on that so I do have a bit of a curve in it but if you can get a good picture of that point it's, it's not it's not the sharpest sharpest uh, in the world but if you look at this and you, you see how I'm sawing back and forth and you can hear it cut Now I did sit down and I did sharpen this, and, and sometimes you do have a little some rough edges. Uh, but whenever you do cut them like that, and you do just use a regular really big sharp knife, you'll find out that you get a pretty decent cut with that. So uh, without further ado, uh, that bat's going to go right there, and I need to cut the rest of these, and then I'll take one of those right there, and I'll cut some pieces off of it, and I'll stick that damn stuff up there, and then I'll staple it all up, and then I'll be done for the day. Uh, here in central Missouri in September, uh, the temperature dropped a bit yesterday, but then it shot back up again today. So it was uh, in the lower 70s and uh, in the lower 60s. Some of the nighttime temperatures were in the 50s, but today was 104 degrees. And it was only supposed to be up in the 80s. Uh, so with, with saying uh, the, the easiest way to just go ahead and cut is just break out your machete. Uh, just be careful with what you're doing. And you will have to, uh, you will have to saw back and forth you can't just crush it you'll actually have to saw it but a uh, good sharp knife a big long sharp utility blade like that uh, I would say that the best thing that I've ever found to cut rock wool would be a good machete so I hope this uh, rock wool cutting tip helped out and uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing with my build even though it's uh, pretty much taken about two years a uh, year and a half two years to get this far so the next thing I have is I want to make sure that I get at least the wall enclosed back here and uh, get that blocked off uh, before it starts getting cold outside uh, because of the fact that I don't I don't have this back here insulated yet and I've got a wood stove that's gonna go in that corner over there <laughs> So I basically have to position the wood stove and then set my set my distances uh, from uh, whatever I need to set, and then I'll take rock wool and I'll I'll stack rock wool between the metal surface here and then the metal surface there. So if you remember the ceiling that I had, uh, it's going to be attached to there. Uh, there's not going to be any wood, so it's it's going to be uh, attached to metal surfaces. So I'll be crushing the rock wool. Uh, in here or I'll be separating it so that's 
that's about two inches right there uh, so this this over here uh, is going to have rock wool I think I'll just go ahead and run a thing of rock wool down right there since I'll have an extra batten so that entire rest of the wall is going to be filled up with rock wool and then I'll have a uh, foam uh, something with a reflective surface and I'll I'll put insulation in that door and then I'll put the door panels back on it if uh, if you remember correctly when I first got this uh, that this door actually had uh, sign panels that had been cut and uh, attached to the framing of this so that uh, this was all enclosed so that's that's the inner framing of the door right there so this this was a enclosed insulated uh, situation both these doors were enclosed and insulated so if you see this uh, right here that's the same situation we had over there and uh, this over here is where my uh, diesel heater is and there is a possibility that I might uh, leave that right where it's at and if you see where those bolts are that are at I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and frame in a counter back here for you know either putting groceries down or doing some type of work but this this is definitely going to be the garage but it's going to remain open and I'm going to utilize that right there for my ventilation system so if you see the fan that's behind me it's going to be pulling air from in the van and it shoots it out that right there sometimes I use it in here just to circulate with the air conditioner uh, but whenever I'm painting and stuff like that I require uh, fresh air intake and uh, fresh air exhaust uh, because of the type of artwork that I do do uh, in here and uh, well if uh, if that sort of sums up the the medieval bed situation about how I far I've gotten with it I would say hopefully before it gets too cold uh, I should have this all taken care of uh, I am contemplating on what I'm going to be using in here uh, I'm actually thinking about going out and getting canvas material and possibly dyeing canvas material so painters cloth or painters canvas uh, we'll be going along the wall here so then that's going to be another layer so I have the the plastic layer and then I have the canvas here uh, there's actually a possibility that I might take metal and just stick metal up in there I don't like the reflective surface of metal and there is a feasible possible situation to where I might just take plywood and attach plywood to the wall there I don't know yet uh, but the TV is going to be elevated so the TV is going to be right about the situation right here I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of those bats cut up uh, get this fan kicked on go take a shower uh, let it circulate let the air filter pull all this crap out of yes I said air filter I said filtration unit that goes on to uh, my step van and that is attached to my step van and what that does is that pulls all of the fibrous materials and things like that the dead skin cells and whatnot out of this room so what it is it's a pod filter and what that pod filter does is it attaches to that right there so that opening right here uh, is eventually going to be ducted to that right there but the opening that I have for the filter goes in through here so the air goes through that hole right there and then comes out right there and then it's filtered into the room I would love to show it to you but it's buried underneath my easel and I'm not going to go through all that I'm not going to unscrew it and attach it I will show it to you whenever I position the ductwork for that opening right there so I can open and close that I think that right there is going to be setting uh, sideways so that side of it on the right side which would be this side right here will be facing up uh, and it'll be pulling air through that channel right there so I have two of those on either side and then it'll be vented to go out that right there uh, if I turn it around and I've, I draw air from that and bring air in uh, but I have another uh, vent type thing up in the front so this this is how far I've gotten please excuse the disaster area but it's it's about 85 90 degrees in here so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and get this taken care of uh, get my garbage taken out and clean up clean up all this crap that I've got from all this woodworking in here and uh, hopefully get my slider doors done get my sliders fixed and uh, relax a bit it's been a long day my back hurts so i hope you enjoyed the video but uh yeah cutting rock wool is uh pretty simple pretty straightforward just get yourself a sharp knife uh, if you want to bevel cut it but if you listen closely you can hear it cut it does a pretty clean job if you get all the way through it but if you don't, you got a little few edges right there. So, uh, but other than that, you know, it's it's a pretty decent way of doing things if you're paying attention to what you're doing. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. And for the third time, I'm going to cut those and shut up.
Have an amazing day. Here's the finished product. Uh, of course, I need to take some more staples and run a bead of staples all the way down. And then I need to put something on this. I uh, will need to, to attach supports here. Uh, like I said earlier, I might be putting plywood on this side and putting metal on this side. Uh, this side won't be seen, but this side will be. I'm going to have a slider door that runs back and forth. Uh, and then I'm going to attach a piece of plywood or a or a piece of metal that goes from the bottom of that up to the top of this. Uh, I would like to keep this all sort of reflective on the inside of here uh, so I can polish it so I can uh, probably hopefully produce some plants back here. Uh, if not produce plants uh, then I can use this uh, space for something else but it's it's a pretty decent space there's gonna be a wood stove over there uh, as soon as I get that completed uh, so that wardrobe is going to be moved um, not quite sure where I'm going to put the wardrobe. I put a wood stove back here and I'll have to regulate the wood stove very closely. Of course I do live out in the country. Uh, so I wanted uh, something uh, involving uh, self-reliance. Uh, so we got we got the diesel heater that's over here uh, and the rest of my disaster area and uninsulated wall and then we'll have the wood stove over here. So the wood stove is going to be something that doesn't require uh, how can I say electricity to operate unless I'm running a fan uh, I am contemplating an air intake or a vent somewhere uh, on the bottom of this right here so it can actually come out that side or it can come out that side over there but the uh, the intake is going to come off the bottom or come off the side and go out uh, and then I'm going to put a small possibly uh, three inch by four inch square box rocket stove uh, inside of this so I'll, I'll go into details about what I'm going to be doing uh, but with uh, with rock wool uh, you know there's there's a dust factor but as long as you're putting plastic up and you're sealing things uh, then you should be all right with it, it it's not that bad I, I mean I live in here uh, most of the time in my art studio so I, I rarely leave my studio um, I'm, I'm actually one of those types of people where I've actually put uh, home amenities into my studio you know I really don't have to live in a studio I can actually do this by choice uh, my other option uh, is going to be a concrete floor in a room with people next to me to the left and to the right in some sort of efficiency apartment I don't like the idea of living in an apartments. I mean, they're, they're efficient and they, they're cheap, but most of everywhere I live here, uh, those efficiency apartments go by income. Uh, so if you make $1,000 a month, they're going to take $500 a month. If you make $300 a month, they're going to take $250. If you make $150 a month, then uh, you're, they're going to be taking $75 a month. If you make four grand a month, then they're going to be taking two grand. So they subsidize off of your income. So the more money you make, uh, the problem is, is uh, I can't harbor bees and I can't work on motorcycles. So <laughs> anyway, have an amazing day. So this is going to give me yet another opportunity to tell everybody to have a nice day. So yeah, I, I clean, I vacuum. Uh, I have a yellow vacuum. Uh, I've had this uh, 2013, <laughs> 2012, 2013. So I would say about six years. Going strong, doing pretty good. Uh, the filter that's in it gets cleaned. It's got a HEPA filter in it. And then I have another HEPA filter for that right there. And of course, let's see if we can see that blotchiness going on there. Of course, this camera turns my skin this pleasant white color, which is kind of strange. And it actually shows that I actually have arm hair, but if you look at my arms, you won't be able to see it. So there are little blotches, if you can see, where it sort of looks like a little hive bumps all the way up and down that arm. So that's actually from, from that right there. I'm sweating, so what's happening is the, the particles are getting into my pores and getting into my skin. Uh, <clears throat> because when you sweat, the pore opens up, so that allows contaminants to get into it. And I'm not sweating right now, but I am hot. So my, my skin is open, and there's dust in the air. But yeah, I, I cleaned. Okay, 
we have a, we have a nice floor and I did keep to this so this is still removable uh, there is I think a screw underneath that 2x4 uh, but once I get this side boxed in and secured and then I get this side boxed in and secured there's a possibility that I might have to trim uh, just a teensy bit off of this right here or shift the entire thing to the right I'm not quite sure just yet but I can actually put a standoff but my uh, slider is gonna have to stand back off of that and if you look down this right here is about a half inch off and that's a 2x4 so I can go two inches out from this right here so that slider mechanism should pass by this if not uh, then I'm just going to take a circular saw and just lop that son of a bitch right the hell off. I, I do have this weird thing, so if you'll excuse my my PJs there. I'm I'm on my way to take a shower, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back up here just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna show you that nice little ramp that I got there. And the reason why there's a nice little ramp I got there could possibly be because of the fact that the frame is twisted, or I've got some frame issues or something going on. I got airbags up there in the uh, there's a big wrinkle so this part right here has been pushed in somehow uh, but but the way it was pushed in is because there's big air horns up there so something made contact with the top of that and actually took the roof at a flat structure and went like that with it um, it's not really necessarily posing much of a problem I do see where I'm getting some water leakage right in there so I'll go out there and seal that uh, I am going to be putting an irrigation system on this, so I'll have downspout pipes right there on each corner, so water isn't going to be making contact with any of that anymore. So, uh, this will be the last time I say, this is Russ. Have an amazing day. I got some pictures of the rest of the improvements that I've been doing on my step van, and I'll, I'll throw all of it in there. Uh, like, subscribe, and enjoy. Uh, let me know how you feel about things, uh, positively. This corner, I was planning on putting a wardrobe in this corner. I can still uh, separate that right there and uh, bring that wardrobe up here and I can put that wardrobe uh, in that corner. So I've got a, a bit of a disaster area, so I, I literally have all of everything I can on the floor and then it all has to go from the floor and organized. Uh, I've got four carboys or four uh, water containers and then I got the sink I got the old rat cage and then the backpack and some other stuff uh, the yeah so it, it's it's looking pretty interesting in here I got the table and of course there's the old cot so here's here's the painters cloth and it, it's got a nice texture to it if I how can I say if I if I cut a template out and I put it on the wall and then I starch it that's gonna make that rigid I'm gonna start looking up some starching techniques for fabric uh, because I think I'll be using fabric uh, versus other materials for like for instance my slider doors or, or whatnot so I'll give you a brief uh, run through about about what I got here so I've got all my fishing supplies and, and then of course I've got some decorative and then I've got knife sharpening stuff and just all kinds of manly stuff uh, of course uh, I am a man so this is a, a man cave and of course that light right there so I'll give you a brief uh, show we got the TV and then we got the bed right here that's getting framed in and I'm thinking I'm actually going to put something on this side right here that stops me from making contact with anything in the back of that. Of course, I can leave that open, but I don't want stuff falling through there. Uh, I'm going to do something very interesting with this one up here, and I think you all will, will definitely approve of what I'm going to do up here. I might actually pull that out and put a 2x6 uh, a up there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure <laughs> and and put that 2x4 outside and let that son of a bitch straighten out uh, I've actually tried to straighten it out several times by using screws But as you can see all those gaps up there, it's 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 pretty tweaked um, But I can set it outside and try to retweak it But I got a 2x6 out there that can take its place and that 2x6 is going to be a bit better of a support uh, in with what it is that I'm going to be applying in here um, so there will be a door that goes all the way to this 2x4 right here and it will tuck back into that right there 
and I'm not quite 100% sure about what I'm going to be doing. Uh, please excuse the clothes. Like I said, I'm a bachelor and I'm fixing things in the studio and I live in my studio. Anyway, um, something in between here and here. I could actually probably do the exact same concept here. Uh, but I actually need this entire space uh, right here, if that makes any sense to you. So please excuse the mess. This is my studio. Uh, slash RV slash camper slash storage unit. I mean, there's a possibility that I may take this thing down in the woods and and build a cabin off of it. But then there's a possibility I might turn around and sign it and sell the son of a bitch. So uh, with the disaster area and with the understanding that damn it, I finally found my stupid battery charger from my Black and Decker. Uh, so it was buried up there. I don't even know what that damn charger goes to right there. Uh, but I did dig this out right here because I'm contemplating on putting a uh, stereo system in this van. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with uh, something modern or something older. Uh, but if you can see what that is right there, and we go up here and we take a look at this, I actually have two of these. Two 12-volt 30 amp. So I think 30 amp uh, runs into 3,000 watts. So I've got 6,000 watts total. And uh, the stereo system, I think, is only a thousand watts, so I think that should be able to handle a thousand watts. Um, I could run it off of the one that I currently have, but I've got some uh, DC stuff that I'm going to be running off of one of those. Uh, the battery charger is going to be on the one that goes onto the heater when I get my battery banks in here. So I've got uh, a total of eight batteries. Uh, uh, the 45 amp hour I have four of those and the other one I think are 20 amp hour so I have four 20 amp hour and four 45 amp hour so I have several amp hours and I have a collection so this this is the new one uh, whenever I had a burner in here and uh, that's the old one right there so I've had that one camping um, They said never leave water inside these things because they'll rust. That's what the inside of that looks like. Of course, that's just dirty. Because it's been under there for a couple months. But yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a bit confusing. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about what I'm going to keep everything here. If I'm trying to figure out where the hell I'm going to put all my cologne and my backpacking stuff. I need one location for outdoor camping gear, and then I need one location, you know, I need to, I need to do some organizations and things like that, and I can get some storage stuff and put in there and put some storage stuff. But anyway, I'm going to shut the hell up, get off my damn feet, uh, crank the TV up on over there, and uh, contemplate on what I'm going to do with uh, this horrific contraption on the side over here. And I have a few more sketches, and uh, I have to find a place to put all of my art supplies. It's not the fact that I need more space, it's the fact that I need less stuff, <laughs> less hobbies. So I've, I've got World War II stuff up there, i got Jet Boil stuff up there, Magnesia, it's getting pretty weird in here. So I'm going to piece all this together and hope you all enjoy with pictures. <laughs> 